right, everybody, big show for you here today on the Cabral Concept. Can't wait to get into this. It affects everything from our longevity, aging, hormone balance, weight loss, and so much more. We're talking about blood sugar, but not only that, we're talking about how blood sugar levels for many people begins to rise as you age. So there are nine main reasons. I'm going to go through them here today. And then, of course, some of them, a couple of them, I'll turn into individual shows as well. But I want you to have all the information and what you can do if you suspect this may be the cause of your rising blood sugar. The first one is this. Chronic stress from anything chronic stress in your life. So it could be workouts. It could be over fasting. It could be relationship stress. It could be work stress, all of these things, but chronic stress can dysregulate cortisol levels, increasing cortisol in the short term. And then the body begins to burn out and we have low cortisols that low cortisol then in the first half of the day. And unfortunately elevated uh, normal levels in the evening. So elevated levels at night over normal. And this is a real problem. Now, now, what happens, let's just say you're doing an intermittent fast, you're skipping breakfast, but you're still doing your cardio in the morning or workout in the morning, or you're stressed getting to work, all of those things. Well, your body can break down stored liver glycogen, bring that stored glucose essentially into your bloodstream, raise uh, blood sugar levels. It can also break down muscle if needed and bring that into the bloodstream as well, that stored glycogen, or it can break down protein. Uh, so even if you're on a low carb protein based diet if the body's producing cortisol it can break down through a process of uh, gluconeogenesis to convert proteins into glucose so this is an important one to look at easiest way to tell you simply run a stress mood and metabolism test to look at your cortisol levels not just in the morning but over the course of a day and how that affects your other hormones as well. That test also looks at your hemoglobin A1C. That's a measure basically of a 90-day average of your blood sugar, and it looks at your insulin as well. So about two to six for your insulin in the morning, hemoglobin A1C below a 5.6. So 5.6 or below. Anything above, we start to move into the type 2 diabetes-based category. You can also look at your blood sugar levels using a glucometer with a finger prick or a continuous glucose monitor uh, where you're monitoring your blood sugar levels 24 hours a day. All of those work as well, but won't give you the cortisol, of course. That's when we use the lab testing. All right. Reason number two, poor sleep. So this is a big one. Or disrupted circadian rhythms. The human body is meant to go to bed a few hours after sunset and wake within an hour or so or two of sunrise. So humans are diurnal beings. We do not have nocturnal vision. We aren't hunting prey at night. Those are the individuals, those are the animals that are able to stay up at night and then they sleep during the day. Makes a lot of sense, right? That's what they were equipped to do. Our metabolism actually is very well suited to being active and mobile during the sunlight hours, and then starts to wane in the second half of the day uh, when cortisol levels are naturally dropping. So big rise in cortisol, six to eight in the morning or so, it's somewhat seasonal, but around then, and then it starts to just slowly taper the rest of the day. Well, Let's say we're going to bed later or we're getting poor sleep, um, not enough deep sleep, not enough REM sleep, we're not producing melatonin at the right time, that can severely um, be detrimental to our insulin levels, meaning it can increase insulin levels in the morning and it can uh, have an exaggerated cortisol awakening response where it produces even more cortisol upon rising as well. You, again, you can run this on the stress mood and metabolism test, but you can also run a test called the sleep and stress test that looks at two things, cortisol and melatonin. Are you producing melatonin? And if so, are you producing enough? And if so, are you producing at the right time of the day? Because uh, if your melatonin keeps on going through the morning, guess what? You're going to brain fog, you're going to be exhausted, tired, feel like a zombie. And if you're not producing cortisol at the right time, you could be tired in the morning and then wired at night. And of course, we don't want that either. So tracking your sleep with a good uh, tr sleep tracker like Aura Ring or Whoop or Apple Watch or any of those uh, is can be really excellent as well. All right, the third one is this, insufficient recovery. I know that you may love to work out hard, train hard, uh, or go hard and not get enough sleep because again, as they say, You'll sleep when you're dead, right? Well, the problem with that is that you end up dying a little earlier, which we certainly don't want, right? So what we want to do is we want to be able to live life hard and enjoy it, 
but also be able to recover and rejuvenate as well. Because we've found that people getting less than seven hours, really less than even six, uh, is highly detrimental, increases all-cause mortality, increases risk for stroke, uh, high blood pressure, cardiovascular disease, and type 2 diabetes. So be careful with training hard, not recovering as well. Why? it also starts to raise those blood sugar levels. People, they get less than six hours of sleep a night. So again, if you're in bed for eight hours, great, but are you getting at least six hours of real sleep? Because if you're not, they have a people who only get, uh, they get less than seven hours, have a tendency to higher blood sugar levels in the morning. All right, this next one is huge. It is huge. Because as we get older, it's even more important to weight train than it was when you were younger. Now, it's important when you're younger so that you actually build muscle mass and bone mass. But as you get older, you want to at least maintain it. But the problem is most people don't. And the issue is you start to lose, on average, five to maybe even 10 pounds of muscle and bone mass per decade. So it doesn't seem like a big deal, you know, from 30 to 40. You might go from 110 pounds of muscle and bone lean mass to 105. Okay, like, no, nah, not a huge deal, right? But now bringing that over the next 30 years, 40 years. And on average, maybe you're losing seven. Well, over 40 years, you just lost 30 pounds of muscle and bone, right? Like that's extremely important. Why? Because that muscle soaks up sugar, glycogen, even more so than your liver, usually 4X what your liver can hold. So if your liver can hold 100 grams or so, we'll just put it in grams, your muscles can hold 400 grams. And so if you have less muscle, let's say your muscle goes down by 30%, you go from holding 400 to 300 grams. So it's far less, right? But you also have less mitochondria ATP energy, so you want to exercise less. So it's a vicious cycle. So weight training twice a week, ideally three times, but twice a week will suffice. Monday, Thursday, Tuesday, Friday, that'll work, right? And then of course, you'll get in some of your other exercise as well. And, and it might just be walking, but get in, get in as much as you can, liver, uh, liver, um, cardio, and also your uh, strength training as well. So extremely important, extremely important, but it has to be weight training. And it has to be enough progressive overload to build muscle mass, or at least maintain what you do have. All right, and I've got lots of shows on that. All right, number five is the Dawn Phenomenon. I've, I have a podcast on this, so I'm going to link a few of these up at stephencabral.com slash 3359. So I'll link a bunch of shows up there um, that will go on some of these previous topics, but the Dawn Phenomenon. So this is an important one, and I made a note specifically for you. If your fasting glucose is elevated, so it should really be between 75 and 89 you know, uh, for your morning glucose, right? Between 75 and 90, we'll put it there that way. No, it can be all the way up to 126. I get it, but anything over 95 is really functionally um, imbalanced. But many people have high fasting glucose, but they have normal A1C, hemoglobin A1C. What they're not seeing is that overnight, they could have drops in blood sugar, spikes in uh, cortisol levels, not enough melatonin production, especially at the right time. When's the right time for melatonin production? Basically between 9 p.m. and 2 to 3 in the morning. Let's say you don't get to bed till midnight. You push that melatonin now further down the line. Are you producing as much? Maybe, maybe not. We don't know, right? So really, really important um, and also just making sure that we're not waking up like we're shot out of a cannon with that high level of cortisol uh, as well. So all of this has to do with meal timing, exercise timing, cooling the body down a couple hours before bed, calming the nervous system, and getting the body actually ready for a great night's sleep. So that's the dawn phenomenon, really important, that, that spike in the morning, but normal hemoglobin A1C is that 90-day average. So really important. CGM helps with this. Stress mood metabolism test helps with this. Uh, and, and also, to a lesser degree, even the uh, sleep and stress test. Okay, we've got a couple more to go. This is one that's greatly overlooked. Gut dysbiosis, so an imbalanced digestive system. Why would this be? Well, the thing that leads to the greatest amount of inflammation in your body is leaky gut or increased intestinal permeability. Same thing, just different names. Why? A podcast that I did called Endotoxemia. Literally the number one health issue that most people are overlooking. Increases cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, so blood sugar, right? And so much more potentially even Alzheimer's they're seeing now. So basically what happens is you've got a permeable gut. It should be semi-permeable, not permeable. It's allowing 
proteins, bacteria, other toxins to enter the bloodstream. The immune system then goes on overdrive, creating a lot of inflammation, trying to capture, kill, and remove these pathogens from your bloodstream, which can float and move all over the body and set off your genetic predispositions. That's why your genetics don't matter as much as people think. What matters is the interstitial milieu, the environment that you live in inside of your body, right? Outside and inside, right? So that's really, really important. Um, so that's, that's one we want to look at. Best test, if I can only give you one for your gut, it's the candida metabolic and vitamins test. Looks at yeast, candida levels, bacterial levels, uh, mitochondrial function, neurotransmitter metabolites, vitamin levels, 70 plus markers. So it's a great one. All of these labs, by the way, I, I can actually link up labs. I'll put them at stephencabral.com slash 3359. And if you ever just want to look at all the labs that you can get and use right at home in the privacy of your own home, they're at stephencabral.com slash labs. All right. So the seventh one is this hidden toxic load. Talked about the rain barrel effect. It's the first half of the book. So what are we looking at? All the things that are finally being talked about and they're not being laughed at anymore. It's because funny because they were laughed at over a decade ago. Well, it are, it is things like parabens, microplastics, nanoplastics, phthalates, atrazine, um, HCAs, all of these different things from foods, the environment, the heavy metals, right? The mercury, the lead. I just talked about this. Was it yesterday's show? It was two days ago on episode 3357. That's why I hope you're tuning in daily to the Cabral Concept because each and every day we're trying to bring you just one more health topic that when you start to build a foundation, you can't help but be healthy. Like that's the truth because you realize that health is all about replacing your deficiencies and removing your toxicities. I know easier said than done, but you really can't do it. You just want to narrow down what you need to work on and you can make this happen. So heavy metals is one of those phthalates, pesticides, you know, glyphosate, herbicides, uh, BPA, all of these things matter. They come into our body. What happens? They produce inflammation. Okay. Inflammation imbalances hormones. It imbalances our nervous system, which imbalances cortisol. I have a whole podcast on this, how this actually adds body fat as well. Why is body fat, especially uh, adipose tissue around the belly, the worst? Well, it creates higher circulating levels of cortisol. Higher circulating cortisol typically creates estrogen dominance. Higher levels of estrogen dominance create more adipose tissue, right? So it's a vicious cycle. And what we try to do is help people break this cycle. Now, you need to reduce your total toxic load. 21-day functional medicine detox, best overall way to do that. And then you add on things like infrared sauna uh, and other great modalities as well. Okay. Number eight, deficiencies. How do we keep the blood sugar balanced? Well, the body actually needs certain vitamins and minerals in order to better balance the blood sugar. Right off the bat, what do we need? Magnesium, vitamin D3, zinc, copper. Uh, what's another big one? Chromium. All of these things, uh, selenium, if I didn't already name it, are incredibly important to keeping your blood sugar balanced. The other thing is your overall B vitamin family. Excuse me. So a lot of people are trying to supplement with methylfolate or different forms of uh, methylated B12, adenosylcobalamin, hydroxycobalamin, et cetera. But you, your body actually needs the entire B complex family. So B1, B2, you go, go right down the line. The body needs all of those. Why? B vitamins help to properly convert carbohydrates into usable energy. So extremely important, uh, really important. And then you can use add-on products to help calm the central nervous system stress, which might be pulling, again, additional glucose in your bloodstream, things such as what's in adrenal sooth, uh, L-theanine, ashwagandha, phospholocerine, amazing, especially when taken at dinner. So those are big ones. Uh, what can you take in this short term for balanced blood sugar? Berberine, uh, the things that are in Metavolve or in the daily glucose support, all of those are extremely helpful. That that will help. Okay, the last one is this. It's one that we've talked about before, but when you think about it, one out of five women and a one out of eight to ten men will have this issue by the time they get into their forties, and that is hypothyroidism, low functioning thyroid. Now, if you go to your typical doctor, PCP, no, again, no um, shade to them. Here's the issue. The range that they go by is 0.5 to 5.0. That is not a healthy thyroid at all. A healthy thyroid is 0.5 to 2.0. So once you get to 3, 3.5, there's no doubt in my mind that you're going to have what? Lower energy, more brain fog, lower libido, 
lower endurance, hair is thinning, skin's getting drier, poor circulation. Those are all the hallmarks of lower thyroid. But you go and you get your, thi- your TSH levels run and they're like, oh, it's a 3.0. You're doing great. No, you're not doing great. <laughs> you're no longer doing great. Uh, 0.5 to 2.0. And then again, on that one lab test, the stress minimum metabolism, it looks at free T3, which is really the number that you want to look at. Are you making enough active usable thyroid? That's ultimately what matters. But of course, your cortisol levels and everything play into that. And vitamin D plays into that too. So you need a proper functioning thyroid level because if you don't, lower thyroid function slows glucose uptake. That means when you are stressed, or you're breaking down protein from a high protein meal, even if you're low carb, or you eat carbs, the blood, the, the blood glucose levels rise, and it's a longer period of time for you to essentially soak up the glucose in your bloodstream to get it to either burn it for fuel, store it in your liver, or store it in your muscles. And then if you don't, what happens? It turns into body fat, right? And so I think we've been led to believe that carbohydrates are the enemy. No, you can lose diet, you can lose weight on really any diet. A balanced diet is the best diet. It's the easiest one to stick with. But what happens is people have been led to believe that it's all about calories in, calories out. And it's not. There's so much to this, as I just named. None of the things that I spoke about today were calories. Zero. That has nothing to do with it. And I learned this many years ago, and I'm very fortunate to have learned this many years ago working with clients as a young 18-year-old, 19-year-old is like, oh, why is it that Myself or others could eat 3,000 calories a day, no problem, and not gain weight. And a client my same height can only eat 1,600 because if not, they start to gain weight, right? Well, if we're both about the same size, what's the difference? Metabolism, right? All the things that I spoke about here today dictate metabolism. And glucose is part of that uh, metabolism. It's part of your endocrine system, your... Um, I don't want to go too, too down the rabbit hole right now, but your, your, how your adrenal produces excitatory neurotransmitters like norepinephrine and adrenaline and cortisol, your uh, catecholamine production, your mineral corticoids, your glucocorticoids, all of these things tell your body, are we in fight or flight? Are we not in fight or flight? Are we burning body fat or should we be burning sugar? So all of these things matter. Should we store body fat? You know, should we store this as glycogen or should we burn it? All of that matters. And so please you know, don't fall for the, um, the tale that you need to just keep reducing your calories and exercising more. You should have a balanced, healthy diet, not overeating. You should move your body, but there's just so much more to this discussion about metabolism, especially as we age. And hopefully today's show is helpful. I would love to know which one of these nine you would love for me to go deeper on because I want to produce podcasts that our community wants. So I know for sure I'm going to be talking more about these and how they disrupt blood sugar and hormones as we get older. But whether it's Dawn phenomenon, gut dysbiosis, or maybe even what I was talking about before with the sarcopenia, the muscle loss as we get older, did you know that that muscle loss actually slows overall metabolism, but the blood sugar has nowhere to go anymore. It used to have more muscle to be able to go to. So we'll talk about all those things in the future. This was to kind of prime it. Let me know what other questions are there. I really appreciate our community, of course. If you want to share the show because you believe it could help someone, do feel free to do so. The show notes will be at stephencabral.com slash 3359. Have an amazing day, everybody. I'll talk with you tomorrow on The Cabral Concept. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.